everyone, and welcome to the BPD Bunch. We have a panel of people who are in functional recovery from borderline personality disorder, and each week a few of us get together to discuss the ups and downs of our BPD journeys to give you hope and direction for your own. I'm your host, Zanny, and today I am here with Melanie, Andrea, Selene, and a special guest, Blake, who is a mental health advocate and current psychology major. He was diagnosed with BPD at 19 and has been in functional recovery since 2022. Blake found music to be a central point of his experience and recovery in BPD and will be joining us today to share more about that because we're going to be talking about BPD and music. So before we get into that, where in the world is everyone coming from today? San Antonio, Texas, United States. Canada, Toronto. Dubai, UAE. Ithaca, New York, United States. So Blake, why do you believe that music is an important topic to discuss within the context of BPD? Yeah, so that's a great question. And I think for me, music has always been this central point in my life growing up. And through my experience and knowledge of psychology, I've found that BPD is rooted in very heavy invalidation. So many of us regularly are told that we're too much, that we're, ex- we're not thinking things right. Our reactions aren't proportionate to the situation. And that can feel really hurtful. Music can end up giving the validation that we are so desperately craving to know that our emotions, our experiences, our realities are valid. And I think that's part of how so many people who have BPD or are in recovery from BPD end up using music as a coping skill in some capacity or another to get the support that they need and just feel less alone. I really love what you said about validation and and getting that from music. When I was growing up, I found that there were not very many people who were as over the top. And so I always felt very alienated just in my emotional experience. Even if people weren't explicitly saying that I was too much, I just felt it invalidated purely from existing in a space where other people weren't as emotionally expressive. And I think music has been one of those ways in which I was like, ah, Somebody else does feel this way. It also speaks to that craving for belonging, you know, where we're looking for like, where and how can I be uh, accepted and be myself? And I think music and especially the community around music, around different artists, around different genres can really give us this place where we're like, Ah, I've arrived. I found my people, my tribe. So there's an element which there's a risk there as well, right? Around losing the sense of identity, but they can be a benefit, um, depending how far we go with identifying with some of, of the bands and the experiences. I came across this quote that I really wanted to share. It's from Billy Joel and it goes, I think music in itself is healing. It's an explosive expression of humanity. It's something we're all touched by, no matter what culture we're from. And I think that summarizes it so well of how important music is to healing across borders and including within borderline personality disorder. I was reading an article and the article was called music is different when you have BPD, but maybe that's a good thing that when somebody with BPD hears a specific song, they react differently. And the reaction could be this like visceral emotional pull because of the sensitivity. Like my husband can listen to music as a background all day long and it won't affect him. So he'll be listening and he'll be like, it's just sound. It's like background music. But for me, any type of music, even calm music, all of a sudden it's a moment and I'm like pulled in. But that's a good thing because that's the creative aspect of me. That's the emotional roller coaster I go on with that song. So to go off of Salen's point about the universality of music, I believe music is what we call an accessibility universal, which 
means that in terms of across cultures, wherever you are in the world, it is accessible to you as a coping skill. It's something that is so widely available that I feel it's so important to talk about how it can help and also how it can harm in terms of the BPD experience. Because what I found specifically is that BPD can either make a coping skill the best thing in the world, or it can end up becoming really harmful if used the incorrect way, or used in a way to self-sabotage or further intensify some negative or suicidal ideation. Which, by the way, if you're suicidal, please call your local hotline because your life does matter. Yeah, I'm glad that you brought up the sort of the, the two sides to that. I will say from my own experience, I remember in moments when I felt really down, particularly after a really important relationship ended, I would spend a lot of time sort of wallowing in the music that brought about more sadness and I think in the beginning, it was helpful because it was kind of a cathartic release. Like, you know, you have to feel and go through your emotions in order to get to the other side. And I do think that I spent too long in that space. And I would end up sort of keeping myself stuck in this like breakup mode almost, where it was just sad music all the time, which just kept me sad, partially because it was, you know, like, especially if I listened to a particular song enough, then that song would be sort of attached to that breakup. And then I'd hear that song and I'd be like, oh, I'm so sad. That's not to say that there's any particular type of music that should or should not affect you because we all respond to different genres and, and music differently. But just to be really mindful of how certain songs affect you and whether they are a cathartic release or if they feel like they're keeping you stuck. And just to be aware of that, I think is really important. I just wanted to touch on the fact that you just said being mindful, because when I started my journey in my recovery, for me, that idea of nurturing myself with, with healing, especially self-soothing and sound, I think what was important was that mindful piece that you're talking about and recognizing and there was many times that I read that hearing certain voices and hearing certain music that was powerful for me would actually self-soothe and calm my nervous system. However, there's also the other side, as Blake has mentioned, that there is a, other sounds that can actually deter you away from your recovery and away from your healing, right? It's knowing your limits knowing what works for you and your healing. I think that's really interesting because personally, like for me, usually the music that I run to when I am distressed is the sad stuff. Um, it's always like the really like melodic, slow, sad stuff that just has a way deeper meaning than what's on the surface of like what you think they might be saying. But that's just like what I thrive on. So Blake, I remember back when you and I were first talking about doing an episode on music and BPD, you mentioned something that I had never heard of before, which was experiencing the favorite person phenomenon with a music artist or band. Uh, and for audience members who don't know, the favorite person of someone living with BPD is typically the person that they spend a lot of time thinking about or who can easily activate fears of abandonment. Uh, individuals with BPD tend to wrap up their sense of identity and self-worth in their favorite person, and they look to them for validation. And so relationships between someone with BPD and their favorite person do tend to be a little bit chaotic. Not every single person who has BPD has a favorite person, but it is something that a lot of people within the community talk about. But yeah, Blake, I've never heard of that happening with an artist before. So I was wondering if you would talk more about that. In what ways have you experienced the favorite person phenomenon with a music artist or a band? So for me, it's really interesting because when I listen to a song, I pay attention more to the lyrics than anything else. 
if some song impacts me in a really intense emotional way at the right time, at the right place with the right emotion, and the vocalist can match it or bring it to the next level, I, I find that I will want to create a fan page for them. I will try to go to every single one of their shows. I'll try to know everything about them. It's almost this obsessive personality related to it because I view them all of a sudden as all good. And so if that artist does something that is really problematic to me, I have a really hard time separating myself from that, even if it clashes with my values and who I am as a person. And so I think with that, it's really important when we're listening to music that we are mindful and aware of the ways that it can intersect with our BPD and also knowing what steps to take to both protect yourself and also the artist. I can kind of understand what you're saying, Blake. I think for me, um, when it comes down to the FP and music, I don't really so much have an interest in the artists themselves as far as like what else they have going on aside from being an artist. But if I really, really enjoy you, so like one of my favorite is Julian Casablanca's lead singer from The Strokes. I love his work and I will dig for all of his work. And, you know, and he has... Um, another label, you know, cult records where he brings in other independent bands. And it's like, that's more of his work that he's bringing those bands up to light. And I think that that's where I get attracted to the musician or the band itself is like, I just want to know more of your work. This is good. What else do you have? Oh, you've got these side bands. Oh, you have an independent label. Like, I think that's where I get really excited when it comes down to that. So I could say that I make them an FP, but that's kind of where I bounce off of that. Yeah, and for me, it's again been really different. Like I've never had that FP connection with an artist or a band. Um, I can get very up obsessed with one song and listen to it again and again and again and again and again until I get tired of it. Um, but without like, yeah, there isn't like that attachment to the artist. The way that I've experienced music with FP with all of it tied together is when I was in a relationship and I completely lost myself and my identity as part of the relationship and embraced the musical taste of the person I, I was with to the point that I thought I was in love with this band called Trio. They're like a French reggae band. And I was like, I love them so much, la la la. And then um, we broke up and it was like a really traumatic breakup. And afterwards, I was like, what music do I actually like? Do I even like this band? I don't think I like this music. And that was a really confusing time, like to go back to basic when you're like in your early 20s and think, I don't even know what music I like. When music, as we've said, is so important to us and to healing, that was like really confronting for me. Blake mentioned taking steps to protect yourself against things getting kind of out of control and I was just curious like if you had any specific steps in mind yeah. when you said that yeah to be honest the obsession about a band and how that interacts with your FP experience is very dependent on your personality but for me what is really helpful is I need to set boundaries with A, my social media usage. B, I need to set boundaries with how I interact with this band. And so that may be sticking to specific conversation points with the band. For example, when is the next show? Or if they're planning to release music, focusing on the music base rather than getting personal with them in some capacity. It may also include my own personal boundaries with how I allow myself to think about them, which is a really hard and challenging concept. But it really pays off for me in the event because if I'm self-aware and mindful that I had a really powerful experience, what I will have to do in that moment is re-regulate myself and detach myself from the artist and the lyrics. And that sometimes can mean taking a day or two away from any music 
So that way I have the time to process that intense emotional experience and the connection with music. And then also recognize that this is not about me in a way. It's about how this artist is feeling and how they choose to share that with me. And that's how I try to look at it rather than creating this song for me. And that's why I become so obsessed. So how do y'all use music as a form of healing? I've used it to take me out of the current moment. And whenever I was in active addiction and I felt very unsafe. So I would two songs in particular that I would just like run to. One was Oceans by Hillsong and another one was Conversation 16 by The National. Like I would just listen to those in my headphones with the drama that was going on around me. And um, I felt so safe with those headphones on. It was like, that was like my little canopy, my little area that you couldn't get me so long as those headphones were in my ears. I was, I was good. So just because of the time that was going on in my life, I'll forever hold those two songs so near and dear as far as healing goes. One of the unique ways that I've used it is by writing songs. And I actually have a song out that I wrote on the night before an anniversary of an attempt. And I was thinking a lot about it, probably having some flashbacks. And I just start singing. And that's what I do sometimes when I am in the midst of feeling triggered is I just start singing and letting my brain go out. And then if I like something and I'm like, oh, I kind of like the sound of that, I write it down. And then in doing so, I end up releasing some traumatic experiences, both from my body and my mind. So to me, that's one way. So you said you have a song out is does that mean like it's on the internet for people to like find should they so wish? Correct. So you can find I Hope You Hear This by Honestly Me on most streaming platforms. We'll put it, a link in the description down below so you can check it out. In my experience, the other way I use it is connecting with the artists, but also going to their shows because I find that when I'm in a very BPD triggered mindset and I'm suicidal, thinking the world is going to end. I buy a concert ticket because then in my head, it's like, I can't die yet. I have this concert to go to and I have this community that's expecting me there. So when I was in probably one of my worst mind states back in 2016, 2017, 2018, I was going to concerts two, three, sometimes four times a week because if I had a concert lined up, it was the one thing that kept me going. So to me, it's a safety measure. In terms of the accessibility piece, most of the shows that I went to were no more than five, ten dollars a piece at that time. Now, don't get me wrong, there were the few very heavy bands that might have had more expensive tickets, but many shows, especially local bands, will host regular shows for free, or you make a donation to a charity because a lot of bands love to do charity concerts those charity concerts are pay what you can. So if you can only afford a dollar, you only pay a dollar. If you can only do 50 cents, you do 50 cents. If you can only do a nickel, hell, you can only do a nickel. So when you're going to to concerts four or five times a week, these are not huge concerts with thousands of people. These are like mostly local bands. Exactly. I remember actually one of the shows that I went to, which was a really fun show. And I ended up being the only one who went. But it ended up being a wonderful experience because A, it was free, and B, because I was the only one sh who showed up, it was like my own personal concert and it was wonderful. In terms of music and my own healing, I've just used it and use it in every single way, shape or form. I have been an artist my whole life, so it is a creative outlet for me. I've been writing my whole life. Um, I read something the other day and I wanted to share it on this episode. And it kind of sums up how I feel about music. And it says, music has always let me feel the way I need to. It has let me be who I am without judgment. At times, music has helped me control the emotions other people have trouble understanding. Whether that is letting me feel my emotions completely or helping me shut down the things I don't want to feel or talk about. It's sad, but it's invigorating. It reminds me where I have been 
and where I'm going all at once, it reminds me I'm alive. And so for me, it's kind of just part of me every day, whether I want to use it to heal or just show what I can do with it. The most healing part of it, it has to do with authenticity and autonomy. I can write anytime I want. I feel safe anytime I want. It's that I don't have anyone piping at me. I don't have anyone telling me where I have to be, how to do, what I have to look like, what I have to be like. It brings me all of my emotions. It's how I feel BPD is. It's, it paints so many different colors music for myself. I can see the colors in my head. That's really beautiful. Um, for me, I've used uh, music and healing in many different ways as well. Um, in terms of like the how, it would often be like if I feel a huge wave of emotion coming, um, I will put my headphones on and I will go out the door and I will go for a walk and I will blast some music in my ears. That's my usual go-to in terms of how to approach it. And then in terms of like different ways to use it, one is around validating the emotion that I'm thinking. So I might lean into something. If I'm angry, I might lean into something really powerful to validate that in that moment. Or if I'm sad, might lean into something sad again to validate that. Also to make sense of what I'm going through and feel less alone because like someone else has been through what I'm feeling because they're singing about it and there's really something powerful there for me. Other times I use it to take opposite action. So if I am feeling sad, but I'm like, I need to get out of the pit, then I'll put something like high energy and that will help me to actually move and do something. Um, so I'll use music, for example, like if I'm in the house and I'm like, I can't be bothered to do so and like such task, usually like admin -y things or like cleaning stuff. I'll put some music. Yeah, let's do it. You know, so that that can help there. And then finally, like some people have already said around the writing. For me, I don't write the music component. Luckily, I found someone who does. Um, I write the lyrics. Um, I love writing lyrics. I love writing poetry and spoken word because I feel like A, I can express what I'm feeling, but B, I can also put so much more in between the lines and only certain people will get that part and there's something really special about that connection then with the people who do so to go off of melanie and slynn i use music as this cathartic radical acceptance when i'm writing music and it's this physical and emotional release of its toll on me and its weight on me but also as a way to say it is what it is, and I cannot change what's out of my control about this experience that's impacting me, but I can learn to find a new way forward. And so that's the way that I use writing music. But when I listen to music, I use it based on my emotional experience and what I'm needing in that moment. So when I'm really angry and I know I'm going to send a really negative text to someone or even if like I want to punch a wall, what I do is I put on metal music because for some reason there is something about the screamo and the super heavy distortion where it just resets my nervous system in that kind of shock wave. And then I find that I'm able to calm down after sometimes as quick as two songs, which is usually not more than six minutes or seven minutes. And I find that after those seven minutes, I'm like, oh my goodness, what was I thinking? I can actually handle this effectively. And then I remember all the other skills that I have learned over the years and I end up communicating a lot more effectively. I also will use very sad music when I'm very depressed because it's that validation piece for me and just feeling less alone and as if someone is putting my experience into words. And when I'm in a really good mood, like super happy, I put on pop music 
for to increase those positive experiences because the anthems of it, for example, like I don't care. I forget who that's by something I kind of pop and Charlie XCX. That song will get me grooving. I'll be dancing and I'll be feeling like I can take on the world from some of those songs. You already have that stuck in my head now. I'm like, I don't yes. care. I don't care. Yes. I love it. Yes. So I'm what I've learned is that I need different <laughs> types of music and sometimes completely different types of genres of music to accommodate various moods of my life. So that way I can manage these experiences effectively in an, and in a manner that does not harm myself further. I will say that I, I use music in a similar way to what everyone else has mentioned so far. And I think the things that I can add that are different is I use, use it in two sort of different ways. And the first one is putting myself back into my body, which is really important because one of the BPD symptoms that I struggle with the most still is dissociation. And it's not it's not in a really extreme way where I notice it all the time, but I I just feel detached from my body and from my emotions and from what's going on around me. I just seem foggy sometimes. And it's it's one of those things that's become a habit. I've had conversations with my therapist about this where she says that unfortunately dissociation can sometimes be self-reinforcing because it's pleasant to the brain. So the more it happens, then sometimes it just starts to happen more, more often. And so I use music a lot just to keep myself in my body because especially if there's like a poppy, dancey tune going, I just kind of move automatically. Uh, my husband loves to, sometimes when we're in the car, he'll flip through the channels just to see what I'm vibing to because I'll just start, if a song comes on that I am vibing to, I'll start moving. And so it's sort of a fun game for him to be like, oh, what can I do to get her back, back in the car and back in the moment? And then I also use it sort of as general mood regulation because I, you know, I go through sort of just slumpy periods and I like to listen to Disney music, fun, happy songs where I know all the words and then I just burst into song while I'm working on something at home. And that kind of helps keep my mood elevated just in general day-to-day -day life. And I find that that also is a protective measure against actual negative situations happening because the more I accumulate positive experiences in general, the more I feel able to handle the negative experiences when they come up. To wrap up, can we go around and share a song that you found particularly impactful to your healing journey? I have so many, but I mean, I think video and song together can be like so beautiful. Um, I think this year when I was doing a presentation for school, I wanted to do one that was impactful for people. And I did, I was studying the video Rise Up for Andra Day. And it was just this video that by the end of it, I watched it eight times. And every single time I was crying, like sobbing. The music video and the song impacts me every time I watch it. And every time it's one of those motivational, motivational music videos that I watch and it just gives me a kick in the butt. And I'm just like, all right, I get it. Conversation 16 by The National. They have a lyric in there that says, everything means everything. And I'm just obsessed with the idea because everything does mean everything. I think when it comes down to having BPD, so that's my, that's my song. My go-to song would be um, Human, Rag and Bone. And that's the song that I listen to when I feel like I'm, you know, recovery is not linear and I'm having one of these BPD blips and I'm like engaging in some behaviors that I'm, that are not effective and that are from what I thought was my past. And I like feel a lot of shame. And then I just need to remind myself I'm only human after all. And that's the main bit of the song. We're only human after all. And I just blast that into my ears and I'm like, okay, it's one, one time, one day, just get back on it. So I think for me, the song is Rosé by the Ocean by In Her Own Words. 
And it's a very unique experience as how it's impacted my recovery because the week that it came out, I was told for the first time that I had BPD and I left that session shocked and not sure how to process that. And when the song came out, it was that week and right after my therapy session and it gave me the understanding and hope that I needed to slowly take my recovery seriously. That song, when I first heard it, and ever since, I use it as a motivator and as a validation piece and as a way to say you're not alone and also just to remember that therapy session and how it all began. And so that's my song because it's just one of those, it just came out at the right time. And I've been in love with this band ever since with their music. So so my song is from a Japanese group, Lay Your Hands On Me by Boom Boom Satellites. Um, and it was the theme song to an anime called Keys Niver, which is kind of, it's a story about people who get connected and they feel each other's pain. And um, mm -hmm. I found that anime and that song when I was going through some of my BPD recovery and I don't know, there's just something really beautiful about being able to feel someone else's pain. The song always reminds me of the sort of the central themes from that show, which are basically empathy and compassion and being able to connect to other people through, through shared painful experiences. And uh, I think that helps me to have a more, more compassionate viewpoint to my own emotions and my own pain. And so I, I think that's what that song really means to me. And uh, with that, we have to wrap up. I do want to have a little disclaimer to everyone that we're here talking about something that impacts everyone, right? That music is not exclusive to BPD. We brought it up in the context of BPD and the BPD Bunch because we are all people who've been diagnosed with it and this is our experience. But if you're watching this and you don't have BPD and you do relate to our experiences, that doesn't mean anything about your mental health. It just means... As Selene's song, right, we're all just human in the end, and this is the thing that helps connect us despite, you know, our various challenges. So thank you everyone so much for watching. I hope that you got a nugget of wisdom to take with you on your journey. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications so you do not miss a single episode. Blake, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today and talk about music. Make sure to check out below. There are all kinds of links for those of us who are artists. We've got some links down below for you to check out and some of our also favorite songs. So definitely go check that out and we will see you next time.